These are five Lutheran books that every Christian should read. Now, people ask me a lot, you know, if they're looking into Lutheranism, they've never really heard about what Lutherans think or what Lutherans believe. Uh, and they ask me, you know, what are some books that you'd recommend that I can read to kind of understand where you guys are coming from? Uh, and there's certain books that I recommend a lot for people to read to understand the benefits of the Lutheran Reformation, some of the unique insights that we have in our tradition. So today I'm going to share with you five of those books. These are ones that I recommend to a lot of people. And, uh, you know, these aren't going to be overly academic books, because uh, I'm not talking about books that I would recommend to, you know, systematic theologians and things like that from other traditions that want something more academic, though I could do a separate video on that topic. But uh, I'm dealing with more lay-level books, so the average person who's somewhat interested in theology knows, knows about theology enough to be able to handle some, some books on uh, various differences in, in theological topics, but not anything super uh, academic. The first book is the one that I recommend the most, and that is The Spirituality of the Cross by Jean Edward Vieth. Now, uh, this book is, is a classic treatment of Lutheran theology. It's a modern text, but it's one that people use all the time. It's one that's going to be a classic. This is a book that, you know, 100 years from now, Lutherans are still going to be uh, handing to people as an introduction to Lutheran theology and Lutheran spirituality. Um, this is one of the books that I read on my journey into the Lutheran faith when I was a Calvinist trying to figure out some of the issues that differentiated the two branches of the Reformation. Uh, I read this. It was extremely helpful for me and explaining some of the differences. So uh, it, it's written in very accessible language. Um, you know, it uh, goes through some of the major theological topics, uh, deals with the reality of sin and grace, law and gospel, um, the means of grace. Uh, he deals with vocation, um, <clears throat> just some of the unique aspects of Lutheran spirituality and, and Lutheran theology. So if you're looking into Lutheranism, you're curious about it, or you are a Lutheran and you don't know much about your own faith and you're just looking to dive a little deeper, uh, this is one that I would highly recommend. This is a book that I know a lot of pastors use as well for uh, various Bible study classes. And so even if you've been a Lutheran your whole life, uh, you're still going to really appreciate this book and you're going to get a lot from it. The second book that I recommend here is The Way of Salvation in the Lutheran Church. And yes, I know the edition that I'm holding is one that I publish. Um, but the reason why I publish this book with my own publishing house is just because there weren't uh, any real modern editions of it, and I just love the book so much. I first encountered this book um, when I met a Lutheran pastor who was retiring, and he gave me, I was a new Lutheran. I, I had just uh, you know, converted to started going to a Lutheran church, Missouri Synod uh, congregation. And um, I was visiting a church that my wife, then fiance, was was attending, which was a Missouri Synod Lutheran church. And she, uh, you know, I talked to the pastor there and he was giving away some of the stuff in his library. So he gave me a couple of big boxes of books. Now I sifted through those books and there was a little tiny book in there that looked very old. Uh, and this was an edition that was put out, I think, in the 1890s. It was an earlier edition. Um, and, you know, I said, oh, that looks like an interesting little book, The Way of Salvation in the Lutheran Church. So I read through it and I found it extremely helpful. Um, and, you know, I found when I was looking, you know, around to see, you know, is there a modern version of this? Is this still in print? Because I wanted to recommend it to other people. Um, there wasn't really anything out there. So that's the reason I put this out. Um, but uh, this book is fantastic. It, it's a great introduction to what Lutherans believe, uh, especially for people who are, you know, in more evangelical churches, broadly speaking, evangelical uh, or more kind of revivalist churches. Uh, George Henry Gerberding was writing this book at a time uh, when revivalism was huge in America and revivalism was spreading. So uh, people were critiquing the Lutherans to say, you guys don't really have any spiritual faith. You haven't really been born again. You haven't had this experience that we've had. And all the questions that he deals with here are ones that we still deal with today. It's, it's very similar. Now, he's writing, you know, over 100 years ago. The last edition came out about 100 years ago, actually. It was revised quite a few times. Um, but nonetheless, it really sounds like it could have been written today, uh, dealing with many of the same issues. So he gets into, um, you know, the means of grace. He talks about revivals. He talks about conversion, um, baptism, the Lord's Supper, 
justification, sanctification, many of the central topics of, of the Christian faith and, and how we approach these from a Lutheran perspective. And uh, he defends everything with scripture, demonstrates the scriptural basis for all the things that we believe and teach. So I highly recommend this book. This is an excellent one that I recommend a lot. The third book that I recommend is one that came out recently, and this is called The Saving Truth, Doctrine for Lay People. It's by Kurt Marquardt. Now, Kurt Marquardt is, is possibly the best Lutheran theologian of the last century. Um, he's one who I really enjoy a lot. I've been delving into a lot of his writings more recently than I had in the past. Um, and he's a brilliant theologian. He fought largely against liberalism, uh, encroaching into the Lutheran church uh, throughout the 20th century. Um, but he wrote a lot for lay people. He was an academic. He certainly wrote academic texts as well. Um, he wrote a volume on the Lord's, or sorry, on the church uh, in the Confessional Lutheran Dogmatic series, which which is very good. Um, but this is an introductory book to Christian theology. It's kind of like a basic systematic theology. It's doctrine for lay people. Um, now, it's not super basic. Um, I think that there's other books that I would recommend first. That's why I think if you read the other two books that I recommended, um, I, I would have something of a background probably before you dive into this. But uh, one of the things that I really like about Kurt Marquardt is he, he has a great writing style. Uh, he's a fantastic writer. He's very entertaining to read. Um, you know, sometimes you read systematic theology and it's very dry. Um, but Marquardt has a uh, Luther kind of attitude. My wife likes to just say he's sassy in the way that he writes, which is pretty accurate, I think. Um, he, he's, he's definitely a, a more Luther type writer. He's very colorful in his language and he's very blunt about what he thinks, but that makes for a very entertaining read. Um, and he's got some fantastic insights in here as well that you won't even get in, in other Lutheran uh, theologies. So if you want to look at more of a systematic theology, a more basic one uh, from more recent times, uh, this is definitely the one that I would recommend. And it's not super long. This is also part of a, a series of Marquardt's works that are being released um, currently. This is the first volume. I believe there's four that are going to be released. So I really look forward to the others, and I recommend you looking at those too. There's also a volume of, uh, sorry, a set of 10 volumes um, Christian News put out, and I'm reading through those right now of some of more Marquardt's more popular works. It's mostly shorter articles, um, but those are excellent as well if you get a hold of those. Um, though I will say they're written uh, largely in the 60s and 70s, and he's got a lot of cultural references in those, so it might be a little outdated <laughs> in some of the stuff that he says, but still fantastic stuff uh, to check out. The fourth book that I recommend is Grace Upon Grace, Spirituality for Today uh, by John Kleinig. Uh, John Kleinig is an Australian Lutheran, uh, and he has written this fantastic book. He's also written some other things on unrelated topics. He has a Leviticus commentary that, that I've actually been using a lot um, recently because I was preaching through, um, through the Old Testament Levitical sacrifices for Lent this year. Uh, and uh, so he's a, you know, he does Old Testament scholarship, but this book is a book of spirituality. It's a book about spiritual practices. And what's really helpful about this book is that he takes Lutheran ideas and Lutheran concepts, and he doesn't just leave them in the realm of kind of the abstract. And so he's not just talking about the idea of justification, the idea of sanctification, uh, but he's actually getting into these and saying, how, do, how does this impact our life? And how does this impact our spirituality? How does the spiritual life of a Lutheran look different from that of another Christian? And how do we apply these principles of Lutheran theology uh, to our everyday lives? And so he gets into a number of different spiritual practices. He talks about uh, meditation. He talks about uh, fasting. He talks about prayer um, and the battle that we have with sin, the battle that we have with the devil that we fight on a daily basis. Uh, and he just gets to, into all of the regular aspects of the Christian life. But he does this while uh, keeping justification central. And what he talks about is a receptive spirituality, which, which gives a kind of uniqueness to the way that he's approaching this. Uh, and he takes a lot of insights from Luther uh, on the fact that we, as, as God's creatures, are receptive in our spirituality. Our spirituality is not just about doing, but it's first uh, and foundationally about receiving. God is a, a God who likes to give, and he wants to give to us his children who he loves, and he gives us his gifts, and we respond to those gifts in thanksgiving. And, and that serves then kind of as, as the basis for the various spiritual practices, spiritual disciplines. I find this really good because a lot of books on um, spiritual disciplines feel kind of burdensome when you read them. Um, they make you feel like you're just not going to measure up to, and you're thinking, well, I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to pray for this amount of time every day and, and I'm never going to be able to do all the things that I'm supposed to do. 
Um, and this book does not approach it that way. Uh, it, and so it's a very helpful book. Uh, it, it, and I think that it will make you just want to dive into these uh, spiritual practices uh, as a joyful thing rather than as a burden. So this is a fantastic volume. I really recommend you checking this one out. The fifth and final volume is one that's not nearly probably as popular as the other ones, uh, but it's one that I found really helpful. And it's called uh, For God So Loved the World, A Study of Christian Doctrine. This is by Lyle Lang, who is a uh, Wisconsin Synod theologian. Uh, and I'm not in the Wisconsin Synod. I'm part of the American Association of, of Lutheran Churches. Um, but their Northwest Publishing House does put out some really, really helpful volumes, whether you're Wisconsin Synod or not, do you agree with all their theological distinctives or not? They put out some really great books. And this, the reason I'm recommending this is because uh, this is a systematic theology. Um, now, I know I said the Marquardt volume is kind of like that, but it's more a short essay. It's a very basic volume. Um, and this is, if you want to dive a little more in depth, and this is a one volume systematic theology. So it goes topic by topic into all the various different aspects of Christian theology. Uh, it's just over 700 pages, which might sound a little bit intimidating because it might sound like, well, that's, that's so many pages. I don't read books that are that long. Um, but it's very well written um, and it's very basically written. And so this isn't you know, a heavily academic uh, systematic theology, but it's a very thorough one. Uh, and it's written for lay people. And so if you've never really, you know, dived into systematic theology before, you know, you've seen some of the big texts like, uh, you know, the Gerhard volumes, which are humongous, if you look at those, and uh, or Peepers, uh, Christian Dogmatics. It looks a little intimidating. This is a really basic book that, that you'll want to dive into. But also, don't think that it doesn't have any depth just because it's shorter. It's a fantastic volume. Uh, now, I don't agree with everything in this um, because there are going to be some differences in terms of understanding church fellowship and some other things. But even if you don't agree with any, everything in it, that's fine. You probably won't agree with everything in the other books either. But, um, but it's, it's a really, really good book. So this is what I recommend as a first kind of systematic theology. I think it was a little expensive. I can't remember the exact price, but it is a really nice hardbound volume. So uh, I know you're paying a little bit more for it, but it is a nice sturdy volume that will hold up. And it's a good reference. So, um, you know, if you're thinking, you know, what is it that those Lutherans believe about the angels? You know, you can check out the section on angels and see what it is, or about faith, or about the means of grace, or whatever it might be. Um, so this, this is a great reference tool. Well, there are so many other books I could recommend as well. I'm recommending books all the time, and it depends on, you know, what topics you're looking to uh, get into and what kind of level of theology you want to get into. But these are five books that I recommend regularly. They're certainly not the only five books that I recommend, but if you're looking into, uh, you know, Lutheranism, um, whether you are a Lutheran, you just want to learn more about your tradition, or if you're somebody who's just kind of interested in what we believe, these are five books that I would recommend uh, that would help you to understand, um, you know, the benefits of of the Lutheran Church and the great things that the Lutheran Reformation did. Thanks so, so much for watching, guys. If you like this video, please subscribe and share it. You can also follow me on Twitter, which is twitter.com slash justandcenter. Um, you can also check out my blog, my website, which is justandcenter.com. I've got all sorts of podcasts and other things. I do a weekly podcast and all sorts of other stuff there. So uh, we'll see you next time. God bless.